I'm Henry Moore III, and this is Adam Ogle. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a buyer's app to go with your seller leads app inside of Podio. So this may go a little bit faster than the seller leads. Seller leads, I was kind of going through each of the fields and stuff. I'm still gonna to try to do that, but if I skip you any of those things, you may find more of that in a seller leads video. But let's go ahead and jump right into this. Hopefully, hopefully this will be a little bit quicker than when I did the seller leads. So what we're going to do, again, this all here will be blank. You won't have anything up here. So what we're going to do is just add an app. We're going to create our own app. Um, I'm not going to go through all the different options. I was going to say is just uh, don't worry about it right now. So we're going to say buyer five because I have other buyer apps in here. That's the only reason I put a five on it. It's a buyer, right? It's a buyer app. And yeah, let's do handshake. Why not? We made an agreement, so we'll use Handshake. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> so the first thing we want is a text box, and it's going to tell us the, the buyer's name, right? I just want to make sure that's a single line, which it is. All right. The next thing we're going to want is the buyer's phone number, right? After the buyer's phone number, I'm going to want this buyer's address. This is, you know, their mailing address. This is not really uh, that important until we get to like actually signing the contracts and stuff. Next, let me go ahead and put location. And I like doing a location because. Again, it helps like finding zip codes and stuff. They just give me the city. It fills in the zip code by itself. So that's why I do it that way. And uh, I'm going to want their email. And you can also label these however you want. You don't have to put buyer's name. You can just put name and phone and mailing address instead of putting buyer in front of all of these. All right. And just make put some caps so it look more professional. That's something I like to do. Uh, one of the things that you're going to want to know is their investing strategy. What I'm, what I like to do is do this as a category so I can just click it. All right. So how do you invest? Oh, something, uh, get off of that. So we're going to do in vesting strategy. Oh. Vesting strategy, right? So the different investing strategies they may do will be fix and flip, right? What else we got? Uh, buy and hold. Another one. Wholesale, you know, you may be at a JV with somebody, so knowing they're a wholesaler, you could put them in here too. I'll probably, it'd probably be better to put them in another app, but for now, just put everybody in the buyer's app. And we'll just put other, maybe they syndicate or something, it doesn't matter. We'll just leave these four in here and this should be fine. And another thing we want to do while we uh, use it, the categories, you only can select one out of each of the cat, you know, out of the category section. We want to do this as a multi-choice because maybe they, you know, fix and flip and they wholesale too. So it, it'd be good to know. I like to know, you know, exactly what they're doing. Um, another thing I want to know is the, the price point they're trying to stay at. So what is, what is their price point when they're investing? So at least you know where, uh, how much house they can buy. You know, you don't want to try to sell somebody a house if they say they only can invest hundred thousand dollars you bring them a three hundred thousand dollar house you know that's kind of waste of both of y'all's time just you know do a little work on this end and you won't have to worry about those situations right so what type of property i think doing this as a category is a good idea too so we'll say type of type of proper man I got the microphone in front of the keyboard and I'm just going to have to move this around because it's kind of crazy. But single family home. 
that's one, right? Multifamily. And I consider a multifamily, you know, a one to four because you can still get a, a, a FHA loan with a multifamily. So I, I'll put that in there. And apartments, they will be, you know, five and up. Um, some people like to invest in land. And you have some people who, you know, invest in commercial. Um, if they invest in commercial, I mean, you never know. You may be looking at a piece of property and it happens to be zoned for commercial. Make sure you check zoning before you wholesale it because you never know. That property you get for 10000 could be worth, you know, 100000 You know, just, just never know and um, do your research. Why are you asking those questions? It'd be good just to have um, a notes section right under that. I'm going to make this a multi-line note. So why are you asking about the type of property they may ask you? Um, well, they may actually tell you some other things about how they like to invest and what they like to invest in. Um, another one you might want to have is, um, do you have immediate access to funds? Do you have immediate access to funds? And if so, how much? Again, this kind of brings up the price point again to be like, all right, can you get to $200,000 in three days or do you need 30 days? Some people get their money from hard money lenders or the bank. And if they do that, they're going to need a little bit of time. And, you know, which which doesn't matter. I'm OK with it either way. As long as they give their deposit and I know how long it's going to take, you know, we can work it out and I can keep the seller up to date knowing when when we're going to close. You know, just kind of need to know that. Um, and another good question will be, uh, where, where do you want to invest? So some people like investing on certain parts of town. Some people like, uh, events investing in different towns or even where they don't want to invest. You can add that as a question too. But I think this right here is a, you know, good, good starting point for when you're first starting out. So. I mean, let's try it out. I'm going to add a buyer. Um, Sam Smith, three, because he's just, you know, he buys and he sells. Why not? Five, 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 five. Location, one, two, three. So that's his mailing address, his email. And yes, we can select multiples on this. If they don't do it, you just click off of it on um, the price point. Matter of fact, let's go back and modify this price point so it's just a single line. I don't think there's a reason to have a whole paragraph for that. So price point, they want to say 250K and less. And they want to do single family. And matter of fact, let's modify this again. And the type of property, we're going to do a multiple, um, a multi-choice as well. Sorry about that. So, all right, so now we can select more than one if they actually do more than one of those investments uh, in those kind of properties. So we got the notes. Do they have immediate access to cash? And where do you want to invest? And that's it. So now you have a nice little uh, database of people who have cash or have access to cash, where do they invest at? And, and as you do it more, you're going to have more questions. It's good to do a nice thorough interview process with your buyer so you know what they do, how they do it. Um, do they really come through? There's a couple of good questions to ask and make sure they're actual cash buyers. You have people that tell you they're cash buyers, but they're not. They're just other wholesalers and they never done a deal before. So I won't even say they're wholesalers, but um, you just want to make sure people are not wasting their time. They're not tire kickers. You want to find somebody you know you can get you get them the contract and they're going to close and they're serious about it. And there's nothing wrong with working with other um, wholesalers. You just y'all just have to have a you know an understanding and a mutual respect. Like okay, you're a wholesaler. You want to you know sell it to your buyer. You know so y'all got to come to a JV agreement. Are you going to split the fees? You know is that guy's buyer going to pay him? Like how you just want to have all that stuff ironed up and upfront. 
You know, some some people actually try to get on your buyers list and they will shop your contract like it's theirs. So that's uh, that makes it a tough situation. And it's you know hard to have trust with the seller when a lot of things like that going on. So, again, if you have any questions and need any help, um, just let me know. Comment below or just send me a message and I'll try to help you where I can. All right. Peace.